In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an invoice request. You're going to create an invoice request whenever you're trying to reimburse maybe a volunteer, uh, just someone who has a couple of receipts that they just want to be reimbursed for. This would not be used for things like expense reports or for invoices that you receive from a vendor. In both of those situations, an invoice received from a vendor or an expense report, you would send those to ap at bethelweb.org. Once you do so, Judy will begin to start the process of getting those invoices or expense reports in process. So next, I am going to go ahead and hop into Blackboard by signing in with my credentials on the Blackboard sign in web page. And I'm going to navigate either to this menu in the top left hand corner if I don't see these tabs and I'm going to select Financial Edge NXT. You should land on a page that looks like this and at which case you can select expenses and manage expenses. Here I'm going to go ahead and select the new request under the my invoice request tile. And here I'm going to begin to type the name of the vendor that will be um, paid in this scenario. So I'm going to start typing the name and a search feature kind of pops up and I can select the vendor. Now let's say you're trying to pay someone who's never been paid before. You're going to go ahead and email me with a small description of the purchase or the reimbursement and I will go ahead and add that vendor and get them any documentation uh, that I need completed by them if appropriate. So you can email me at cstukesbury at bethelweb.org for that. Next, I'm going to enter the invoice number here. Likely there is no invoice number associated with this purchase because it's just a reimbursement. So you can just type the date that the purchase was incurred on. Similarly, you're going to do the same here. The description is the description for the overarching purchase. So let's just say I um, I got a bunch of food for my crew for Verge. So food for Verge crew on 3.29. Next, I'm going to select the approval rule, and there are two different approval rules. One is for accounts payable and one is for credit cards. Since I'm going to be issuing a check, I'm going to choose the AP option for the person I'm sending it to. The person that you select here is the person that will receive this expense next to approve it. If an expense is over $500 at this point, it will go automatically to the appropriate executive staff member for approval additionally. So first it would go to Andrew and let's say it was $501. It would then go to Brad Lagos. If this was an operations expense and it was $501, it would go to Jeff Collins maybe for example, and then go on to Dave Harvey for executive approval. This expense detail and purpose section is an area where you can provide extra detail for the purchase that you want to communicate to the approver. Also, if you feel like you're running out of space up here to provide a sufficient description, go ahead and use that section here. So that would be good for a situation where the receipt doesn't match the total amount that's being reimbursed. So let's just say um, Chad only wants to be reimbursed. Oh my goodness. First for $50. So let's say the receipt was like $150 and I only wanted $50 for reimbursement. This would be a great section to communicate that. Next, I'm going to select the expense category and I'm going to select the only expense category that's available. And I'm going to delete this description. I'm going to take the description up here and paste it into this description because this transaction doesn't have multiple line items that I'm going to be breaking it out to. So if, for example, the amount was um, $700, it's likely that a couple hundred of those dollars would go to one account and a couple hundred dollars would go to a different account. And you would likely want to break down the description for each of those. So I'm going to go ahead and put $50 here since that coincides with this example. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit 
this section. This is the account distribution or the account string or the account code. This is really where the expense is going to hit from a budget perspective. So this is the bucket that it's going to go in. Now I'm going to go ahead and say that this would be a good expense to hit the student ministry supplies account. So I'm going to start typing student ministry. And you'll notice that when I start typing student ministry, it, it generates a list or a search feature to show the accounts that, that fall within this criteria. If I was to type in the supplies account, it would begin to show me all the supplies and consumables accounts that I have access to. Another way I can search for account for an account is by entering the natural account number, or maybe I just type in the campus. All these are different ways that I can search for the account that I'm looking for. But just so you know, the name of the account is a conjunction of the department name and the natural account code. So because I'm looking for the student ministry supplies account, I'm going to type in student ministry and supplies. Again, it's student ministry department in the supplies and consumables account. And I'm going to select it for crown points since that's what this particular purchase is for. Next, I'm going to select a project code. A project code is used for anything that your supervisor or department head has established to keep for tracking purposes. So maybe there is a big event that you do each year and you want to track the expenses for that. This is the section where you would put that in there. However, if you don't have a project code associated with this purchase, you're just going to type general and select that option. You'll never touch this class drop down. If I wanted to break out this expense into multiple multiple accounts, I would select add expense category. There I would go ahead and just again select the same expense category, change the description and provide a description here. The reason that you likely won't use the add account distribution option is because this would break out the transaction to different accounts, but it would provide the same description. So it's likely that you would want to break out the description with the new account code as well. Next is the field of payment type. So I'm going to select check. Um, most of the time you're going to select check. There's really very few times that you will ever select anything. Otherwise, you'll know if you're supposed to select bank draft. Um, the comments Let's say, uh, for example, I wanted to uh, have this check given to Dave Harvey to give to the to the person. I would type in give to Dave Harvey. And in the mail check to vendor, I would select no. So this is really mimicking our old check requisition form. So just kind of think of it like that. So again, payment type is check mailing check to vendor no we're going to give it to dave harvey next i would click here and select the um account that or rather the receipt that i wanted to um, give to this transaction so i would select the trend the receipt and i would select open and that way it would attach it to this transaction afterwards i would hit submit and as long as there's no errors it would let me submit it on to the next person for approval. That is pretty much all the information I have for you on how to create an invoice request. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know and I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks so much.